I'm sure you've heard the phrase, fend for yourself. Maybe it brings to mind thoughts of independence or strength. But what if you're fending for yourself at the age of six? We're going to look into that on today's episode. How do you do, friends? Welcome to the Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast, where we share the gospel of Jesus Christ through the art form of audio drama. <laughs> yes, and that includes sound effects. We do this by using true life stories of real people. I'm Timothy Gregory, and I have a question for you. Have you ever wondered what you'd be like if your circumstances growing up were wildly different? Who would you be today? What if you were in a desperately bad situation and you had to fend for yourself from a very young age? Or, well, maybe you have. Just like the man in this week's Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast. You know, in most societies, there is a, well, a safety net for children who, for various reasons, become wards of the state. Neglect can be one of those reasons. The unfairness of it can create resentment in a child, even anger. And sometimes that anger can lead to uh, rebellion <laughs> and even crime. Just a bad situation that spirals into something worse. Now, how do you recover, much less survive something like that? Larry Wilson is going to shed some light on that very thing in this week's episode. Also, you want to stick around because later we're going to give the rest of you an opportunity to enter our sweepstakes drawing for a prize. <laughs> you know, no, it's not a cash prize, but it is a prize, and I think it's a prize you're really going to like if we draw your name. But first, let's get to it, folks, the classic true testimony of Larry Wilson. What are you doing? Getting us something to eat. Oh, put it back before someone sees us. You hungry or not? Yes, but... Then shut up. We could get caught. Pipe down. You're drawing attention. You're going to get us... Hey, you kids! What do you think you're doing? Run! Oh, no! Come on! The boy in our story didn't need anyone for anything. This is his journey of discovering the holes his self-sufficiency couldn't fill. The classic daring story of Larry Wilson, right now on Unshackled. Growing up in Nebraska, life wasn't always easy. In fact, I can't remember a time in my childhood I wasn't fending for myself. It was a way of life, ours at least. Sit over there. Now you're that Wilson kid, ain't you? So what if I am? There's a whole herd of you. Fifteen. And which number are you? Nine. Are you old enough to be in school? Of course I am. I'm practically seven. How many times have I run you out of here? I've never seen you a day in my life. How many times? Two. <laughs> you're already a criminal. What's your number? I'm calling your mother. <laughs> Good luck. What do you mean? I ain't seen her in days. And even if she is home, she'll be asleep. Foam waker. If none of us kids can get her up, you think a phone ringing's gonna do it? You kids can't live like that. Uh-huh, we do. My store's not a food pantry. I'll take my business somewhere else. <laughs> you mean stealing. What's it to you if I stay out of here? Leaving the store manager's office that day, I was already planning what I'd swipe from the gas station. If you'd ever seen a fight erupt at the end of a bread line when the soup kitchen runs out, you know the levels to which a man stoops when his hunger pains get the best of him. I didn't care I'd been kicked out of a store. There were others, and I was resourceful. Only I didn't know the store manager had taken things a step further. Police, open up. Ain't hey, nobody did nothing. Kid, let us in. All right, where is everyone? How should I know? Little ones are upstairs watching cartoons, and you leave them alone so there's no crying. Well, everyone is to pack their things and... No one's going anywhere! Oh, you've got a mouth on you. Judge already signed papers. What judge? Look, kid, you can either go get the others, or we'll haul you out kicking and screaming. I'll go kicking and screaming? 
Now, kid, that's going to scare the rest, and we don't want that. You don't want that. <sighs> All right. I'll get him. Mom went to court to fight, only she didn't get far, and all of us were placed in an orphanage. Eight of us kids were adopted out of the orphanage, but my rebellious attitude frightened off any of my prospects and turned away even the best intended foster parents. During my six years at the orphanage, I ran away 30 to 40 times. Each time I was brought back and punished, which only made me look for more opportunities to escape. You know the rules of this school, and yet you're determined to break them. I was just taking a walk. The groundskeeper pulled you off the wall, Larry, and you fought with that frail old man to get away. What's the matter with you? I shouldn't be here. Well, you are. I get woken up in the dead of the night to come down here and deal with you again. Then let me out of here. I don't like your face anyway. You don't like my face, huh? No, and I'm going to change it for you. <laughs> let me go. Not a chance. Most orphans would be grateful to be off the street. While you're determined, that's the life you want. So what? You're a child, and you must have a guardian, an adult who is responsible for you. I fend for myself. You're not as tough as you think. Tougher than you. I'm trying to grow you into a responsible adult. I don't need to be. <laughs> that's it. That's the last straw. You're going to reform school. You can't just send me there. I can do exactly that. Before I knew it, the miles were passing by outside the bus window, and I was on my way to reform school at Kearney. There, my rebellious behavior landed me in a psychiatric ward in Omaha. <clears throat> Larry, do you know where you are? Hades. <laughs> no, that's the next stop. Where are you now? State loony, Ben. Psychiatric ward. And why are you here? Self-defense. You consider attempting to stab your teacher with a pair of scissors self-defense? He started it. Started what exactly? He egged me on. By requiring you to stay and finish an assignment, he egged you on. Ain't nobody gonna mess with me. Yes, I see that. Good. At least you got some sense. Your file says that the last eight years you've been in the system, you've run away nearly 40 times. Glad somebody's been keeping track. It makes me wonder who hasn't crossed you. Or what you're running from. I ain't scared of nothing. Larry, you passed all the psychiatric tests, so we're going to parole you back to your stepfather. Maybe you won't have any reason to be hostile and run away if you're where you want to be. Just get me out of this madhouse. The situation seemed hopeful, but before long, boredom got the best of me. Getting kicked out of high school for breaking and entering was almost more than my stepdad could take. I knew my days there were numbered, so I broke into his desk and stole some checks and forged them for cash. I took the $400 and bought a bus ticket for California. It wasn't long, though, before the money ran out, and with nowhere else to go, I hitched rides back to the Midwest, where I made new friends. Did you like the movie? Yeah, it was all right. Natalie Wood was fun to look at. <laughs> Marilyn's still my favorite, though. Of course, Marilyn's everybody. Whoa, stop. Check this out. You must have gotten some motorcycles in. Man. That's a beauty. Oh, which one? Second over. Wow, it is. It makes me wish I could ride. <laughs> Let's go try. Uh, you want to meet back here in the morning? No, now. Huh? You see that alley door in back? I bet we could bust the lock. What? Larry, I, I don't... It'll be fine. Come on. Not hurting anybody. Well... I suppose we could just go in and sit on them. Ha <laughs> ha! Come on! How'd you learn to pick a lock like that? It's a natural life skill. Life skill? <laughs> so, no one taught you? Nope. Practiced on my own until I could do it with my eyes closed. Bingo! Come on! Wow, this place is amazing. I didn't see these through the window. What's that? Check out this vintage Beretta. Larry, I I'm not so sure about... Come on, don't be a baby. Ooh. Look over here. Hello, hog. <laughs> Help me get this bike out through the door. What? Come on, we're gonna go for a Th ride. This is more than I wanted to do. What are you, scared? I'm out of here, Larry. Come on, just help me roll this out. 
Oh, fine. Just be that way. Oh, no. Hide, Larry, hide. Folks, we'll get back to Larry's story in just a moment, but first, I want to share a bit about how our ministry is able to bring hope to people all over the world. Unshackled is now in its 71st year of spreading the good news through powerful stories about real people. Our success is a result of God's blessing and the involvement of, well, supporters like you. When you contribute to Unshackled, it has a direct impact. Your support allows us to hire quality writers, talented actors, as you can hear, a skilled production team, and a devoted staff. Through your support, we're able to share Unshackled worldwide. So, in order to continue the work of spreading the gospel and allowing us to offer this program for free, won't you consider making a donation to Unshackled? It's really quite easy. All you need to do is click on the live link, if there's one where you're listening, or visit our podcast website at unshackledpodcast.org. That's unshackledpodcast.org. Dot org, and then click the Donate button. Or you can always write a check, Unshackled. We take checks. You mail that check to 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. We thank you for your partnership in our ministry. And now, back to Larry's story. My mind spun as the cops jumped out of their cruiser and shined their flashlights around the scene. I felt the gun's cold metal in my hand, and I suddenly wondered why I was the one hiding like a scared rabbit. Put your hands up! What? And keep them up, both of you. Better do as he says, Joe. But he's just a kid. A kid old enough to pull the trigger and blow your brains out. All right, take it easy. Take it easy. Turn around. Hands on the wall. And I need your guns. You're making a big mistake. You'll be making a bigger mistake if you don't do what I say. Those officers weren't stupid. They kept up a conversation with me, and after a few minutes, I told them my name and who my mother was. Then they talked me into going to her place. We went, with me in the back seat still holding a gun on the officers. When we got to the house, I followed them to the door. You sure she's home? Yeah, she's home. Keep pounding. Why isn't she coming then? Probably passed out in bed, drunk. Shh, I think I heard her. What is this? I... we haven't done anything, officer. No one said you did. But your son has a gun to our backs, and we need to come in and talk. Larry, what... what are you doing with that gun? What kind of trouble are you bringing home now? Mom, stand out of the way. I gotta have a clear view of them both. Put that gun down and stop this. Ma, get out of the way. (laughs) Oh, Larry. You're gonna be locked up for this. (laughs) No, I'm not. Stop this craziness. Stop bawling and shut up, Mom. Larry, honey, just put it down. Quiet, I can't even think. Larry! I said it! Oh, my... Had that thing fired, he would have killed your own mother. Oh, no! No, no, no! Get back in the house, Ma. You two, back to the cruiser. Now. Larry! Shut up, woman! It's a strange thing when you don't even know where you're going, but you know you need to go. Scenes were all playing out so fast. I wish I could have slowed them down. What now? We've driven half the countryside. Stop the car and get out. You don't want killing us on your record, son. And Joe here has a kid three months old. That's up to me, isn't it? Get out. Come on, Larry. You can't come back from something like this. It'll ruin your whole life. What do you care? I just know you want more out of life than what you'll find in prison. Stop talking. All right. Lay down on the road, and nobody better be jumping up as I drive away. Okay, okay. We'll stay down. Good land, child. 
Why, it's the middle of the night. I know, Aunt Lida. Well, come on in for the bug stew. Aunt Lida, I'm... I'm in trouble. <laughs> Figured so. Turning up here this late? <sighs> Let's go put the kettle on. I broke into a shop and uh, held up the two cops who came on the scene. I see. Where are they now? About 20 miles away on some country road. Oh. Making their way back to town by now, I'm sure. Oh, Larry. I just... I don't know what to do. Uh, you only got two options, son. You mean keep running or turn myself in? Only two, I see. Oh, I don't want to be locked up. What man does? But you also got to live with yourself. And part of that is owning consequences for what you've done. So you're saying I should turn myself in? I'm saying you should imagine yourself years down the road and make the decisions today that will get you where you want to be. As the sun broke free on the horizon, Aunt Lida went with me to the sheriff's department where I turned myself in. Part of me was hoping the forfeit would dock my punishment. The charges for breaking and entering and kidnapping with the intent to kill would not be lessened. I got sentenced to 16 years in the state penitentiary. Little did I know then that receiving sentences would become a way of life for me. Mr. Wilson, it looks here like you got out on a technicality. After serving... Three years. Three years for a 16-year sentence. Only to be locked up again for several months for... Robbery. Robbery. And here we are again today, facing armed robbery. I believe you are the definition of a career criminal. Do you have anything you wish to say? No, Your Honor. Mr. Wilson, you are hereby sentenced to seven years in the state penitentiary for armed robbery. Hopefully this time you will decide on a new way of life. Court is adjourned. Ha! <laughs> the only thing I was deciding was what bank I'd rob next which worked out well, considering I only served a couple of years before I was let out again. Now, nobody gets up or tries to follow me unless they want a bullet in their head. <gasps> okay, okay, no, okay. Oh, gun dog. <sighs> Watch it, mister. What do you think out you're Out of the way! <sighs> hey, I remember you. No, you don't, lady. Oh, yeah? You were a jerk in high school, too, creep. Looking back, if I really wanted to get away with the crime, I should have left town immediately. The way it was, I was counting the cash I had stolen. Figure no one was looking too hard for me. But I didn't know my old classmate had gone to the FBI and identified me. And then I wouldn't have put it past my little sister to rat out where I stayed. The FBI had me in handcuffs before the night was through, and I served another year in prison before I met up with my old friend. Mr. Wilson, we meet again. You're looking now to have your remaining sentence dismissed? <laughs> That's right, Your Honor. In these last 13 months, I've turned my life around, and I believe I can contribute to society and would like the opportunity to do so. I've been reviewing your record, and I don't believe anyone can help you. <laughs> Numerous foster parents, reform school, the state and federal government have all tried and failed. You actually come out worse than when you went in. There's only one who can help you or change you, son. And that's God. I'm reducing your 25-year sentence to 15. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. I don't think my claim to have changed or my tears fooled the judge. But getting a decade knocked off my jail time was worth conjuring those misty eyes. I wanted nothing more than me let out so I can get back at my old classmate and my sister for outing me. I would teach them. But I was full of hate. And yet I couldn't even see it was consuming me. Or maybe I just didn't care. For the next four years, I focused on lifting weights. As my body grew bigger, so did my mouth, and I was in many fights. I needed a change of scenery. My caseworker suggested a transfer to another prison system with a farm machinery repair school. I agreed. I even made friends. 
who were nothing like my old ones. Hey, Larry, it's Tuesday night. Yeah, you gonna pester me more about the Gideon Bible study? It's Gideon Bible study. And if you come, I promise it'll be the last time I ask. Okay, I'll go and look forward to a quiet evening next week. All right, you'll enjoy it. We've even got a preacher coming tonight. Wonderful. I knew all about doing time so one could get on with life. And the way I saw it, this prison Bible study would last an hour tops. And finally, I'd be left alone. It wasn't the first time convicts were preached at, so I knew the general spiel. Or at least I thought I did. When your life is at a dead end, your self-respect is broken, and you have nothing to show for the years but a lot of bad memories and big failures. When the people of your past hate you, add to that you maybe have a lot of hard time to do. Where do you find hope? Where do you get a second chance? Friends, God offers every person on earth a second chance, no matter what you've done. That second chance is new birth in Jesus Christ. It's a fresh beginning with a guaranteed heavenly ending. If this is what you're seeking, or if you don't know what you're seeking, you're just tired of what you've become, then I invite you to kneel where you are and pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today. The preacher's words washed over me. I couldn't tell you what he said. I stayed in my chair, but my heart was bleeding more than it ever had, even more than during my prison sentencings. Christ, if you're real, come into my life tonight. I didn't really know what Christ coming into my life would look like, and I didn't know how he would do that. But I believed he could work through me supernaturally. All right, guys, don't forget, Gideon's Bible study is tonight at 6, and all are welcome. <laughs> wow, Larry, a few weeks ago, you would have been telling me to stick a sock in it, and here you are. Had a change of heart. No doubt. The guys are saying, if they want to sit through a church service, just invite you to lunch. <laughs> There's worse things to be said about a man. Well, they're no longer being said about you. It wasn't long before I was on parole and had a job waiting for me at an implement dealer. I introduced myself to a woman who sang gospel music, and Marilyn and I hit it off. Before we married, my parole officer read my entire record to her as a warning that I'd be back in prison again. I'll never forget the way she looked back at him and said, I don't believe you will. God's able to keep as well as to save. And she was right. Even since our two children came along, there hasn't been a time we quit traveling and preaching the good news that saves when nothing else can. Friends, the God of second chances can give you a fresh beginning, no matter what you've done. And Larry Wilson had done a lot. But even if you haven't been to jail or committed a crime or acted out in some extreme way, you still need a new beginning. As God's Word tells us in Romans chapter 3, verse 10, there is none righteous, no, not one. And that presents a big problem for everyone. A problem that, well, only Jesus Christ can solve when you put your faith and belief in Him as your Lord and Savior. Friends, if you have a question or comment for us here at the Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast, something you may be curious about or, or even want to share with us, you can write us at podcast at unshackled.org. Or call and leave us a message at 312-281-1264. We'd love to hear from you. And now before we get to our sweepstakes drawing info, I just want to remind you to subscribe or like our Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast. You can even share it or tell a friend. 
We'd also love for you to review or rate our podcast. And don't forget to check out our other podcasts on this same platform, Unshackled Daily Devotionals and Unshackled in Person. We appreciate your input and involvement in our ministry. And again, please consider supporting us so we can freely offer quality Christian programming to the world. Okay, here's the prize for our upcoming sweepstakes contest. A beautiful wooden scripture plaque, and I believe the scripture uh, on this particular plaque is Hebrews 11.6. But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And folks, this plaque is gorgeous, especially if you're looking for daily inspiration from scripture. You will love this authentic and very unique wooden plaque. Um, it's been sawn from a tree branch or a log, and it looks like it, and, uh, and it's cut in such a way so as to keep as much of the bark around the perimeter as possible. It's been handcrafted around the natural character and beauty of the wood that, uh, well, that God created. So all you have to do to enter our Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast sweepstakes drawing is call 312-281-1264 or... Email podcast at unshackled.org. And give us your name, phone number, and email. The winner of this sweepstakes for this beautiful scripture plaque will be announced on April 5th. But the deadline for entry is March 31st. And next time... Nice of you to share your Jeep with us. Glad for the company. I could live without the heat (laughs) and dust. Think of it as an adventure, Kelly. My assistant's afraid of getting lost out here, Doc. Ah, no worries. Ben knows this area well. That is true. I've driven Dr. Craig to many places for his research. Four strangers traveling together in a dangerous desert. Hang on, everyone. Rocky Road ahead. What? This terrain is too rough. She won't go much farther. Ah, I was afraid this was going to happen. Great. What now? I'm so sorry about this. Everyone will need to get out. Out? You mean walk? Through the desert? Come, friends. Now we must travel like the shepherds of old. Would they find the way out before their situation became desperate? What is that? Looks like a sandstorm. It's headed right for us. We must get out of the wind. This dramatic Easter classic entitled The Wilderness on the next Unshackled. Heard in the classic true story of Larry Wilson were Stephen Spencer, John Bobbo, Demetrius Troy, Dave Kappas, Mara Kate Burns, and Anna Maria Alvarez. Original music and audio engineer, Don Badorf. Sound effects, Demetrius Troy. Recording engineer, David Pierczynski. Script, Jack O'Dell and Kylie Hammond. Well, that's it for this week's Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast. So until next time, unless our Lord returns before then, I'm Timothy Gregory, your brother in Christ.